welcome to another three string guitar lesson. So, been a little bit of time since the last video, hope you're all doing okay. And here is another great lesson in Keef tuning, following swiftly on from Start Me Up, which was uh, back in March, I believe. And we're still in the same tuning, like I said, so it's basically allowing us to do all these classic moves. But also play a bunch of different chords as well. Um, this is actually taken from the uh, middle three strings from like regular guitar tuning, so it allows us to do some quite good chord shapes. And what better style of music to follow a classic chord progression than a bit of soul? So we're just basically <clears throat> doing something with uh, three three major chords just to show you what you call some different inversions, different shapes that you can play in different places up and down the neck, which you can actually do for any chord. Um, and so you can get some quite sort of interesting versatile results out of three strings. We're also going to have a little look at some the equivalent minor ones. Um, so you can put all these together and play a bunch of different tunes and hopefully you should have great fun with it. So I reckon let's get straight on with having a look at the chords. Okay, so we're still using this very same set from last year and like I was saying in the previous couple of videos, we are now using, so this is a regular six pack for a regular six string guitar and we are using uh, the equivalent of strings four, three, two and we are actually tuning in exactly the same way as you would for a regular guitar as well. So we are in D, G, B. And um, this particular set, it's a little bit heavier than normal. Uh, I've got like 12 on string one and uh, 52 on string six. So these particular ones that I've currently got on is like the fourth string, which is a 32. Um, the third string, which is a 24. These are all fractions of an inch. And the second one is a 16. And I've chosen a particular set. So the third string is wound just so it gives the whole thing a bit more body. But, you know, you can play around and see what you find, how you find it. And here is the tuning. There's a D, string three. There's a G, string two in the middle, and there's a B, high string one. And because we're going to be playing chords here, uh, it's important to make sure that your action, the height of the strings off the frets isn't too high. And if you've ever tried actually playing chords on six string before and found it a bit fiddly, this should be a bit easier. I mean, to start with, we've got half the strings, but also they're generally much wider apart on three string necks. So you should find it easier to like bridge round and not catch strings underneath. So. What I was doing was just playing uh, probably the most classic soul sounding chord sequence you can get, which is basically just putting <coughs> three major chords together that all fit really well. So we're starting in G, which is just, you know, this is tuned to a G, isn't it? It's the, the root note's in the middle, but it's still, it's still a G chord. And then I was going to a D, and so uh, I'll just go through some of the sort of simple shapes to start with. And so this was uh, fret two on the middle string and fret three on string one, the thin one, and then leaving the open string three D ringing. Now that's actually a, what you call a power chord. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll cover the full triads in more detail because there's always three notes in a major chord and so that's a D power chord and then C maybe slightly more difficult so finger one right down on fret one of string one and then finger two on fret two of the low D string and then I'm trying not to catch the middle G so I'm keeping this bridged round here so you've got to really use the tips of your fingers here. And that's the C, and then back, back to G. Okay, so dead simply, I, I was just playing, I mean, we, we're going to add stuff in to make it more interesting, but I was basically one, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, C, two, So it's a four bar phrase, G, C, D, sorry, G, 
D, C, back to G and start again. So you finish on G and then you stay on it when you loop it. And probably if you're not too familiar with playing chords, this is like a sort of beginner level lesson, certainly the first part of it. <coughs> you want to consider, like you see my whole arms move in there. Like it's a little bit of shoulder movement and definitely the wrist is flipping the fingers over because if you've got finger two at the top of this C shape, you're going to have a different wrist approach as to when you've got finger one at the top for this D shape here. All right. So you can run around that. That's quite good fun. Um, you know, you could maybe use those chords and uh, rewind this video and, and have, have a play along with, with me because all of the stuff I was doing there, it was just exactly that sequence. So you could play those basic chords along and see if you can keep up with the changes. But what we can do is have a look at how we can play the same chords, or to start with the same chord, in different places. Uh, so I said that you've always got three notes in a major chord, okay? Uh, and so in this particular instance is what we're tuned to is G, B, and then D. We've just got them in a slightly funny order here. And so as a result, we can play three different shapes um, in different positions on the fretboard, put in the each note as the lowest one each time. So this first open chord position is D as the lowest one, and then this diagonal one here is G as the lowest one, and then this one up here is B as the lowest one, and then it's back to uh, the, the octave of that one, so right up on fret 12. And, and so you can, like I said, you can do that with any chord, so it's really sort of versatile, it's great for you know certain styles. So open G. I'm sure you can play that. Uh, this next one is a straight diagonal, so frets five, four, three. So that is a G chord. Well, it sounds like that. It's just getting, getting a little bit higher. We're kind of reordering the sequence of notes as they appear on the strings. <clears throat> so uh, again, with all of these, just got to make sure that you're a pushing down hard enough and b not too flat so you're not catching the string underneath and then the next one was right up to fret nine with my third finger and fret seven with my first finger and then second finger is on fret eight of this high string one and then Wherever we've started, whatever's the lowest shape, we can always attempt to do a high version as well. So this, this is doable here because the open strings, you should hopefully have a dot, or maybe even two dots at fret 12. So you can clamp your fingers across like that and you get a really high version, low, high. If that's an absolute nightmare, you can even try and fit three fingers in. So basically, G. G, G, G. So just going to have a look at using those same three shapes but for different chords. And if this starts to get a little bit confusing because essentially you're going to be recycling the same shapes. So you might want to head on over to codetuition.com and download a completely free three string chord box template PDF. So you can draw in all of these shapes for yourself, make yourself a little sort of chord dictionary for this particular tuning. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for the second chord in that pro progression. So to start with, it was G and then it was D, C. Okay, and then back to G. So we, we've had a look at the ones down here. You can jot those down if you want, but we're gonna look for some further up the neck now. So the second chord was D. And I'm going to count up the notes on this middle string. So essentially what I need to do is in order to find the root note or find the position, the fretboard position for a particular chord, I need to find the correct note to start it from. So I want to use this bar position. Um, the same as the open strings for, for D. 
and I just said that the root note was on the middle string. Okay, so that's a G down here. So I'm going to count up until I hit D. Now, I'm going to count up through what we call the natural notes. So that is uh, essentially the white keys on a piano. <coughs> if you visualize a piano keyboard, it's got white keys, black keys. So there's seven different white keys uh, in what we call an octave, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then there's five different black keys, which we would call sharps or flats, depending on which song we're in. And we're going to ignore them. We're going to try and leap over, jump over the uh, black keys and just find the seven different um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G natural notes. Now, they're not all the same distance apart. Most of them are two frets apart, but there's two pairs of natural notes that are only one fret apart. And so it's quite handy. It's dead easy to do once you're used to it, but it's quite handy to be able to find your own position, even if you haven't uh, completely memorized all the notes on the fretboard. You don't need to do that. You can just work it out, you know, and play in your own time. So starting from G, G to A is two frets up because most of these natural notes are two frets apart. And because we go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, we don't have H or I in, in music. So G just goes straight back to A and they, they are two frets apart. Uh, a to B is also two frets apart. So I'm now on fret four for B. But B to C, they're next door. So that's one of the pairs that are only one fret apart. So C is fret number five. However, C to D are two frets apart. Now that's the note we want, so I'm, I'm going to remember that and I'm going to come back to it. So that's uh, fret 7 for, for D, so that's where I want to play my D chord. But we'll just carry on up and figure out where the rest of them are. So D to E, they're two frets apart. And then the other pair that are only one fret apart are E and F. So it was B and C on this string at frets 4 and 5, and then E and F on this string. So uh, that means F is fret 10, and then back to two frets apart, back up to G. So we've got G to A, two frets, A to B, two frets, B to C, one fret, C to D, two frets, D to E, one fret, E to F, two frets, F to G, two frets. Okay, so <clears throat> we found D, fret 7. And so if I just do a bar across there, I said that particular shape has the root note on the middle string. So if I do that, that's a D chord. All right. So I've got a D down here. I could do that one up there. And if I wanted to play... So, say, what did we have? We had the three shapes for G. We had the, the bar position, so we just found that one for D. Uh, we had this one, which was the diagonal one, and in G it was frets three, four, five. And then we had this funny, not diagonal one, uh, which was frets nine, seven, eight. All right. So, that's G. This is D. Now, that diagonal one, the root note, is on the low string. So where's D? Well, it's the octave of what we're tuned to, because we're tuned to D. So uh, I can just do that diagonal up there on frets 12, 11, 10. So that is a D. That is a D. That is a D. And that is a D. That's a D power chord, but if I was to add in, you might find this a bit of a stretch, if I was to add in fret four in the bass, that is exactly the same shape as the D, the, the G, sorry, that we played up on fret seven, uh, nine, seven, eight. If we play on frets four, two, three, that's a D. So we're literally just recycling the same shapes, but you know, maybe letting certain open strings ring out. So, G, D, D, C, same idea, where was C, G, A, B, C, C is fret 5, so root on the middle string, bar 
slap your finger across all of the strings, that's a C chord, and um, D was, well, there's, there's the diagonal G with the root note on the bass string, uh, the diagonal D was up on fret 12, and D and C are two frets apart, so if I go down to fret 10, that is a C. There's a C bar at fret 5, there's a C at fret 10, 10, 8, 9, 10, 9, 8. That's a C as well. We know that one. If we wanted to play a really high version, so the, the G shape, you know, some, some of this might not be that practical to play, but I'm just sort of demonstrating how you can move the shapes around. Um, so there's a G, 9, 7, 8, move that up to 14, 12, 13. That, those two very fingers there on 13 and 14 are exactly what we call one octave higher than the C, the regular C, so that's a very high tinkly one. G, G, C, let's go low for that D, C, C, very high or regular one, and then So, all I was doing um, on top of that was seeing if I could let any of the open strings ring out, you know, so you can, you can play certain ones and, well, that, that's a G, that's a G, so you can let that ring out, you can let that ring out, see, see which ones work, and, um, you know, off, off a D chord, maybe. That's better, isn't it? That sounds good. That's a low D, so I can do lows there. And you, you can even see if you can add any notes on top and just use your ears like, that's not such a good note. I think it sounds better to go to on the top string, one fret higher. So there, I'm just keeping that D ring in, barring the top two, and then maybe not that one. There's my G. D and classic soul move just like step down because D and C are always just two frets apart. So the D, the C, sorry, doesn't sound quite so good with the D ringing in the bass. So, but you could get away with letting the open G ring out because that actually fits with that chord. And then nope, that works. So keep it simple. This is more for experienced, like more advanced players. Keep it simple, but then you know just use your ears and see which which notes work on top of these particular shapes, and you you start to add quite a bit of complexity and. Sort of fairly quickly, there's a high G, D, so yeah, takes a little bit of practice but you can start small, expand, expand it out. You can do exactly the same thing with minor chords as well. So, three minor chords that would fit together really well would be E minor, A minor, and B minor. So, E minor, if there's, there's a G, I'm going to go for fret 2 on the low string, and then I'm literally just going to let the other two ring out. There's a E minor, so that's great. Uh, if you've tried to play six string guitar before, this shape should hopefully be familiar. This is a, a standard A minor shape from six string guitar. So fret one on the high string, fret two, fret two. There's an A minor. There's a B minor. 
So when I was working up and down to try and find my root notes, um, A and B were two frets apart. So therefore, the A and B chords want to be two frets apart. Okay. So incidentally, that's a C major shape. If I take this high note on the top and I knock it down by a fret, there's a sort of classic Beatles-esque move there. Uh, that was going from C to C minor. So this, this A minor shape and this B minor shape are the same as the bar shape, except we're knocking down one fret. So a minor chord always has a single note that's one fret lower than the major, which is that one. And if we went back to A minor and B minor, and there's the E minor. And incidentally, this E minor shape, um, it's on this string, the middle string. So if I add this it back in, so fret one, that's that's an E or an E major. Uh, take it off, it's an E minor. So that's basically the same as this diagonal G here, dropping this down, and G to G minor. So you'd often say major sounds happy, minor sounds sad. Uh, so, little bar there, a little bit more of a difficult hand position that. So bar, and then a bit of a stretch, you can use your pinky finger, as long as you can sort of bridge it, bridge it round. And then, say if I was up here for this G major shape, frets 9, 7, 8, the note I want to knock down a fret is this one. So the minor shape up here, off this slightly um, asymmetrical one, is eight, seven, eight, as opposed to fret nine up there, major, minor. So G minor, G minor, G minor. So E minor down here, where else can we play it? Well, we can play up here. And we can play. So this one, to start with, the root note is on the low string. This next one here, the, the root note's on the top string. So what's that, B? C, next door, D, E. So fret five. And then the other shape that I played. So the root notes on the middle string. So G, A, B, C, next door, D, E. Major, don't want that, we want the minor version. So. E minor, E minor, E minor. Could even, if you can manage it, you can even do a bar up there. It's probably a bit, a bit fingery that one. Uh, and then you can do the same thing with the other chords. So A minor. There's an A minor. There's an A minor. A there. A there. A there. And then the B is just going to be two frets. That's a B minor. That's a B minor. The bar at seven. And then that's a B minor. You might find some of these chord shapes a little bit tricky, so you, you want to take your time with them. Again, I'm running through these. You probably want to rewind the video and, you know, stop it, jot the shapes down on the completely free PDF and, you know, Go for it after that. <laughs> and then again, it's just a question of finding some notes that you can kind of faff around with on top of the chord shapes.
you know, so anything from sort of minor sounding soul to a minor blues, um, you know, th those chords will work really well. And like I said, you can you can combine those with the three major ones. And so you can actually um, play, you know, a ton of different songs with those. All right. So I hope that was fun. And we're going to be using some of these very same chords in a couple of great song lessons following hot on the heels of this video. Um, so get stuck into some of those different inversions like the major and minors, and I will see you here again very soon on Coda Guitar.